I want to say this right now about the sport of boxing. I don't want everybody at home to hear me when I say this. A belt, I'm tired and I'm at home. And this goes for any company. I don't care if it's Top Rank, if it's Golden Boy, if it's Mayweather Promotions, if it's PBC. There's too many champions in the sport of boxing right now. Too many champions. Too, it's, not a, it's not a such thing as a super champion. Not at all. And I'm not taking nothing away from no fighter. It's too, it's too many belts. And the reason why is too... Let me tell people what's going on in the sport of boxing, why there are so many different titles and so many different belts. People don't know you have to pay... Every, for every belt that you win, there's a sanctioning fee. So now if a fighter wins an intern belt, he has to pay a sanctioning fee. If a fighter has just the regular belt, he has to pay a sanctioning fee. Then if a fighter is a super champion, then he has to pay a sanctioning fee. This is not good for the sport of boxing. When the sport of bo now when a fighter fights, every fighter can, every fighter is a champion. Now after you see no be belts, is now it's like a, a fighter winning, a, winner, winning an amateur trophy. Everybody is a champion. Everybody got, got have a belt. Now we look at the lightweight division, okay? And I want to say, uh, uh, the fight the other day was, was a hell of a fight. Congratulations uh, uh, to the okay. winner. Mm -hmm. um, he done his job. He went out there and, and did what he had to do. But if Devin Haney is the WBC champion at lightweight, right? And Javante Tank Davis is the WBA champion. Now, it's safe to say that Telefimo is the champion at, he's the champion, the, the IBF and a WBO champion. Mm -hmm. But I can't knock, I can't knock what he has done. Because I have to take my hat off to him, you know, for right. what he has done. And then we, we talk about different fighters pro proving themselves. It's, there's no different from Marquez. He had, they're going to say, oh, Mayweather was the bigger guy. Remember, at one particular time, in, in 1996, before I went to the, when I, when, I, when, I, when I was in the Olympics, I fought at 125 and a half. It's 125 and a half because it's 57 kilograms. So in that same year, I turned professional at 130. So then, so we can't keep talking about guys, uh, this guy is a small guy. To be the best, you must take risk, you must take chances. And, and if it takes going up in weight or going down in weight, that's the sport of boxing. That's how boxing works. And we look at Manny Pacquiao. He done the same thing. He takes chances. But then when he loses to me, guess what they say? May, Mayweather was the, you know, he was the, he was the, he was the bigger fighter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always a catch-22 when it comes to me. So once again, I don't want to knock no fighter. But I'm tired of seeing fighters after the fight. Everybody got a championship belt now. Now, boxing... The, all these belts is like trophies. The WBC, the WBA, uh, uh, the, the, the IBF, and the WBO. Y'all gotta clean. Y'all gotta clean this shit up. Y'all have to clean this up. This is bad for boxing. Ain't there such thing as no super champion. You guys are just taking extra money from all these fighters, getting extra money from sanctioning fees. And and this goes for my company as well. We need we we gotta clean the sport of boxing up. This shit is this don't look good. Every when you look on TV now, everybody's a champion. You see all these fighters posing for you know posing with a belt. And then we got another guy at lightweight, which is uh, Ryan Garcia. And then I look at Ryan Garcia, and he's a pretty cool fighter. And I, I don't take a net away from him. He's with uh, Golden Boy, and I want and I wish him nothing but the best in his career. But before, before you can, and I've seen Ryan, for an, for an example, Ryan Garcia is one of the fighters that got in the ring holding a WBC belt and holding another belt. This is not cool for the sport. And, and do I think he can become world champion? Absolutely he can become champion. Do I think he can beat Javante Tank Davis? Right now, as of right now, absolutely not. Now, that would be a fight next, but Tank cannot overlook uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Hell of a fighter tough competitor, and like I said before, if he went to four weight classes, it's obvious he can fight his ass off. So any, any fighter that's making, that's no different from Canelo. Canelo was able to jump weight classes. You know why? You look, you say, well, Canelo, when he faced 
me. They said, well, you, you, you beat Canelo at a catch weight. Remember this. You go back and you read the articles. Before you can speak on anything, you must do your homework. Right. Canelo was the one that said he, was, he wanted to fight me at a catch weight class. So me being a smart businessman, guess what? I'm going I'm, to I'm test you and see if you really want to do it. Now, is he one of the best fighters out there, pound for pound? Absolutely. He's one of the best out there. But we cannot overlook Gervonta Tank Davis. He's also one of the best out there, pound for pound. And you look at him, uh, I believe it's, a, it's like over a 90% knockout ratio. 95. 95% mm -hmm. knockout ratio. So whoever, he, you got to realize this. One thing we know about Gervonta Tank Davis, you know, he got an equalizer in any hand. So he can hit you with any hand, and it could, it could be good night, Irene. Now, Gervonta Davis inside the ring, we realize that. Now, Gervonta Davis, real quick, uh, so we can go back to the workout. Uh, the maturation of Gervonta. Can you explain briefly for 30 seconds on what you have been able to do for him as far as the maturation is concerned? Well, one thing I'm going to keep stressing to these fighters, just period. Everybody want to know how am I able to still live the life, you know, that I live. We can't just think about, and uh, I told the the other day after the fight, he was like, he said something some, some real. What I didn't do was, when I, made, when I made my money, I didn't just go buy a car or buy a chain. It took me a while uh, to learn a game. I didn't have a Floyd Mayweather. I wish I had a Floyd Mayweather. And it's another, you know, if I'd had a Floyd Mayweather, I, I would probably be, I would probably be in a lot better position than, I, than I, I'm in now because I would have been, I would know how to move a lot better when I was younger and mm -hmm. knew, knew, just knew smarter things to do. But Al Heyman, a, a great businessman, uh, Leonard Ellaby, I must take my hat off to him and the whole Mayweather promotion staff because, you know, while, while I'm out traveling the world having fun, they, you know, they, they take care of the company and they're doing a great job doing that. So I must commend Mayweather Promotions for doing that. And one thing about us, what we do is we put fighters in a position uh, to win titles and we put fighters in position uh, to make millions, you know. And when you look, even like our fighters that fight on PBC, if you look, when our fighters fight on PBC, we talk about the Nielsen ratings. Ratings. When our guys fight on Fox, we get we don't we don't go out there and talk about uh, how many homes we. Sometimes it's four men. Sometimes it's five men. So we don't knock nobody for what they do. We just got to speak facts. And then there's another fighter out there that we don't talk about that deserves his just due. Andre Ward. Andre Ward. We don't never talk about him, even though he retired undefeated. He beat a lot of he beat a lot of uh, you know a, a lot of good fighters, and we need to talk about him and give him his just due, also. But the other night when I seen that fight, just when when, when I go back and look at that fight, I feel that it would have been a lot more exciting if if uh, Lomo got started earlier. Early. But at the end of the day, my thing is this. I think he, kind of, he, he could have been worried about the power. Now, you can't be worried about what nobody say on the outside. You know, you got to train. That's why Tank, we got him in the gym right now. We got Tank in the gym right now. So he trained because he expected many different looks. So many different looks. You don't know what, what Leo you may get. You may get a Leo that's on his toes boxing. Right. So that's why Tank has so many different looks in his training camp. But I take my hat off to so many, all these fighters, you know. Um, I had my, you know, I had my day in the sport. And even like a lot of times when they was talking about uh, comparing Lomo to me. When you got a, I didn't have to have 500. I didn't have to have 500 amateur fights. And he done something that I wasn't able to do. Right. He was able to win two gold medals, which is a, is, is a huge accomplishment. Right. Just to go to the Olympics is something huge in itself. But, and they said, well, guess what? Um, he fought, he was the quickest to win a world title than any other fighter. Man, once you fight 300 amateur fights, you're a professional anyway. You're a professional anyway. And you cannot compare, you cannot compare a fighter like Lomo to me or a fighter like Ali or a fighter like Sugar Ray Leonard. You know the reason why? Because we won our first fight. We won our second fight. Right. We won our third fight. So, did I'm not going to take nothing from Telefimo for what he did the mm -hmm. other day. But remember, this guy already had a loss 
to Salida, and Salida wasn't, quote, unquote, the best guy in the world. Correct. He was solid, and he, he won a title before, but he wasn't the best guy in the world. Well, we appreciate the insight, Floyd. Thank you for joining us again, Floyd Money Mayweather. We're going to go ahead and get back to the workout. Javante is there. Again, Halloween night, you'll see this guy there. I'll be there, too, and you better be, too. Showtime pay-per-view.